so I, I want to share something actually from our oldest son, David, you know, he's often the source <laughs> of uh, inspiration for me. And uh, I thought this was really inspiring. It's, it's fun to also see him come into his own, you know, and say things that he doesn't really realize how profound they are in the moment. Um, and I thought it was really profound because I often go through life telling people, you know, life is uh, a box too, of chocolates. No, <laughs> life is too short not to do what you love or not to do what inspires you. But he actually one day when we were talking about different things, he said, you know, life is too short to do the wrong thing. And I thought that was really powerful because if you view life like that, then it kind of makes you take pause and stop before you maybe take a negative action or do something mindlessly or feed the ego or think it doesn't really matter and say, okay, well, how much time do I really have in this world? And what do I want to make of it? Right. But then if you even take it a step further, forget about um, restricting from doing something really negative or damaging to somebody else or to yourself. But what about this? What about those times you're filled with anger or resentment and you can't offer forgiveness or apologize? I think that that is really how we go through life doing the wrong thing because what that leads to is more pain and more unhappiness and all the things we spoke about so far. So that's why, again, like that one sentence, if you actually, when you're when you're met up against a, a difficult decision to make or a problem and you're feeling angry and resentment and you just, it's like eating at you, Right. Life is too short to do the wrong thing. And in this case, the wrong thing is to not take action, obviously, and not practice forgiveness. Another idea, which I, I often use, and I know we, we speak about this often, and it relates to the first idea we spoke of, is what happens when, when a challenge comes into our life, especially the small ones, but even the larger ones. A question that I always ask myself, and I know and we have this conversation, if you look at your life in totality, which, again, we so so few times do. I think most of us would realize we are so unbelievably blessed. One. And then the question is... It's cute when you say that, because you are the only person I know in the world that says, you know, we are so unbelievably blessed. I think people will recognize that they have blessings. I have never met, to this day, somebody uh, which is beautiful. Uh, and, and it's good, because I think that is the, that's the bar, right? Right. But okay, so so No, no, continue. Yeah, yeah. And then I love the question it. and the question that I then ask myself when something is upsetting or annoying, am I willing to pay this to keep all the rest of my blessings? Is this payment worthwhile if it is for payment for all the rest? And the answer almost always is of course. What's the question? <laughs> 